Good morning, David. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. And you? Absolutely fantastic. And I'll tell you, it, it, it's like a breath of fresh air to go through this book on a daily basis. You you have captured something here that just that really gets inside our hearts and we grow forward. Well, thank you. <clears throat> This, this has been a journey for you. I mean, you've spent a lot of time putting this, this book together and, and working with National Geographic. I mean, this, this is a piece of artwork that, that belongs to, in every home. Well, it's, um, it's a product of 12 years, 135,000 exposures, um, and the assistance of... Uh, two dozen scientists, at least, and a dozen editors, and I'm definitely a uh, collective work. I, I'm glad that you allowed the the uh, scientists to to have essays to put their part of the story in as well, because I mean, it, through their words, we also see pictures, and this is a collaboration of of pictures and and essays, and it's to me, it's just music for the soul. Well, um, thank you. And um, the I think the creatures certainly are uh, music to me. Oh, exactly. And if that comes across at all, um, I'm grateful. One of, one of the things that is so unique about about this book is is the fact that that you have the white background. It, it's it's almost like they're out of water, and this is what they look like in in a natural world, but it, it's out of water. Um, well, I can guarantee you that none of it is out of water. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think I, because I really just want to see the creature, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying for, um, copying, mimicking, you know, some idea of, uh, uh, 19th century European natural history illustration. The- um, you know, just the creature on the on a plain white piece of paper. Yeah. Um, so you get to just see how the, how the creature's made. It's it's almost like I can reach out and touch them. And and I do. I find myself especially with the octopus like like I'm sitting here touching their tentacles and 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 touching, you know, just different parts of their body because is you're not allowed to do that as a human being up here. Yeah, we don't have we don't have access um, to these creatures in that way. Um, so I'm just trying to 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 get the, to get to some connection. Um, Nat- on a sort of Nat- selfish. Nature loves to hide, and yet your your camera and you you got to go where they where they were placed in their in their solitude basically, and it's a, it's almost like they were saying hi, welcome. What do you want to know? <laughs> That's a, I mean I hope that it's that. Um, that that sort of mutual regard is a possibility, at least in our imagination, um, because that would um, uh, enrich our lives and actually make um, the caring um, uh, aspect of what's necessary to to promote conservation um, and ensure that these creatures have a place to live in the future absolutely um, get closer to that that would that that's a really that would be a lovely thing to be able to contribute a small amount to with the lens of your camera do you feel like an archaeologist because you're going into areas that none of us get to or do you feel more like a historian saying hey look this is the way that it was on this particular day i don't guarantee what what it'll be like tomorrow Hmm. Um, I don't, you know, uh, my career photographing animals started exclusively with with endangered species, and that is not a happy subject. Mm -hmm. And this, but it's ripe with opportunity to do better. Um, So it's not, it's not necessarily a pessimistic story. Um, and I think there's kind of a moral obligation <clears throat> to to not sit on one's hands 
<clears throat> and to maintain a uh, personal discipline that that promotes progress rather than depression, so to mm-hmm. speak, um, if one can come up with that. <clears throat> so that mm-hmm. coming from that place um, in this project about octopus, seahorse, and jellyfish, I, I got to go out in the world and just explore. Yeah. Uh, most of the time we most of the time we see the octopus in full motion. They're always, you know, scurrying around and things like this, but you you actually you you stop them in a moment and with, with that lens and and you give us the opportunity to to live out in their moment. Yeah, I I like this you know, the formal portrait thing. Mhm. Um <clears throat> and my friend um W.S. DiPiero, who's a poet, he, he called it being able to to pause the river of time. Oh, God. Um, and, you know, that, that, that pause button that I am able to push is about a five thousandth of a second. Wow. Um, because I use electronic flash, and that's basically the effect of shutter speed. Um, and... I find I, that's really interesting to me to be able to just say, "Hold on, let's just really stare at this thing." Mm-hmm. Um, and that sort of license that that portrait photographers have to stare um, is not something that we're usually allowed to do. Right. Um, and but <clears throat> in the situation of a <clears throat> of a formal portrait that one would take of a person. Um, you're, which is I find to be really interesting as a photographer. <clears throat> you're sort of given permission to stare, <laughs> and that's pretty rare. But it's a fantastic thing to be able to do, um, because the only people that give you permission to do that is a photographer or a loved one, mm. um, and th- that's a degree of intimacy that I find uh, deeply satisfying. Well, these um, these uh, seahorses, they look like posers. They look like supermodels. Like they they they're sitting there posing for you saying, "Let me give you this shot." Oh, let me turn to the right. Let me look at let me let me see let you see this side of my personality. <laughs> That's a really lovely idea. Thank you. Um, but I think that I mean, you know, I have no idea what the creatures I photograph think of me. Right. I, you know, there's no way to know. Um, but I, you know, if, if there's some element of mutual regard um, that is is uh, intimated, communicated, you know, uh, uh, fiction or not, um, that's a nice thing. Are there two jellyfish the same? Are they like a snowflake, unique in their own right? Because I'm I'm looking at these these jellyfish. I'm not seeing two the same here. Um. <clears throat> You know, I think that all animals, there is individual variation. Um, I mean, I, I know that, you know, from the research that the writer did on the filaments that come off the heads of a particular species of seahorses are as individual as our fingerprints. Wow. So I can imagine that the particular... There are these jellyfish that make their living by cloning themselves. Oh. So from a genetic diversity point of view, <clears throat> their DNA would be identical. <clears throat> but even as identical twins, you know, actually look slightly different because there are developmental aspects that happen during their lives. Wow. Um, so, you know, I think every, I think every, Every one is an individual. You are a lucky man to put your lens that close to these these beautiful creatures. You're a very lucky man, and I'm so grateful that you shared your your journey with us because a lot of lives will be changed as well as we will learn through your lens, sir. And I can't thank you enough. 
Thank you very much. Have a great day. You be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you.